Hi, welcome to episode 144 of the Passionate Spinner podcast. My name is Tracy. You can find me as Schnüffelt here on Ravelry on Instagram. And uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for remembering that this podcast exists, for still being a subscriber <laughs> to this channel. It's been three months since my last podcast. And to be honest, I wasn't sure if I would come back to podcasting. I needed this break. I took a break from everything because, you know, the pandemic made me and it was good for me. And in the first few weeks, I didn't really do a lot. So I wouldn't have anything to show anyways. And then my, my love for making returned and I made tiny videos. I called them my tiny video series. I made 10 of those. They're all up on the channel and I made two for baking and things for knitting and for sewing. And I thought that maybe that would be the new podcast version. You know, this is going to be the new me. But then I decided last week that I really missed this. I really wanted to do a podcast again. So here I am doing a podcast and I will not show you all of the things that I made because that would take forever. I decided to just bring two finished objects, two works in progress and talk about those because those are the things I've been working on. And also I'm pretty sure that I did tiny videos for everything else. So you're not going to miss out on anything. I'm going to make probably one more tiny video for three clothing makes that I made sewing wise that I did not bring today. Um, but apart from that, I've actually showed everything. So yeah, here we are. Let's, let's try this. I didn't write down show notes because I decided to do this. And if I don't do it right now, it's not going to happen again. Uh, so yeah, what I'm wearing today, I'm wearing a Holly Byrne skirt. I'm going to stand up so you can see it's the chain polka dot version. It's a very nice, it's a nice and flowy skirt. And to go with it, I have a very too big button down shirt, but this is a very special thing because this used to be my dad's favorite button down. I think it might be older than me. It has been washed 200 times at least and probably more. And the quality of this thing is impeccable. It's still like, like new. The only thing it is like it, where it is not like new is in the collar. And if I flip the collar up, you can probably see here, it's ripped all the way because my dad wore it so much. And probably about four years, five years ago, he gave it to me and asked if I could turn the collar, which is something that people used to do, you know, because things used to last forever. And if I, could turn the collar it would look as new again and he could wear it but I didn't dare I I still don't dare try it I could you know I'd have to take it off completely turn it and sew it back on and I'm not sure if I will ruin the shirt or not and um, then my dad passed away two and a half years ago or almost three years ago now and I'm wearing it today because it's my dad's birthday or it would have been my dad's 79th birthday today so I decided to wear it and because my hair is really long because I couldn't go to the hairdresser and have it cut uh, you can't really tell with a collar you know when the hair is up down and stuff so yeah I'm wearing it today and then I will just put it on a hanger and put it in my wardrobe and just have it you know <laughs> I'm just gonna own it <laughs> okay now, knitting in the past, I brought, like I said, two things. The first thing is a pair of socks that I made for my husband. These are a birthday gift for my husband. His uh, birthday is in two weeks and um, he will get a very cliche gift because he's going to get socks and boxer shorts and I'm going to show those later. Um, but yeah, these are the socks. They look like this. So the first one did a lot of pooling. Oh. Ow! <laughs> I just whacked myself in the head. See, I have not done this in a very long time. 
And then the second one started pooling like the first, then I nipped the heel like I did with the other one, and then it spiraled. And uh, yeah, no idea why, but it did. So here they are. I think they are really cool. The yarn is Drachenwolle. She used to be a hand dyer in Germany. And the colorway is Gewitterwolken Regenbogen, which means stormy sky rainbow, probably. And, or storm clouds and rainbows, something, something like that. They are super fun. They are a German size 45. I have no idea what that is in non-German sizes, but they are very big and very gigantic feet. Um, so yeah, these are for my husband for his birthday. I knit them with 72 stitches, top down, slip stitch, heel, flap and gusset on US 2s. That's a 2.75 millimeter needle. And um, yeah, that's all there is to say. Plain vanillas, like almost all of my socks are. And the other thing that I brought to show you is a blanket. Now this blanket, I finished it a few weeks ago. I started it in 2013. So let me show you. It started off, let's fold this over here. It started off as a lock cabin blanket and I used the Mason Dixon pattern and they're co not called Mason Dixon anymore. I think it's making daily, ma makes daily. I, d I don't, I'm not quite sure, but this is the how to lock cabin recipe from Mason Dixon. And it started out as this blanket that I wanted to give to friends for the birth of their daughter and I never finished it and then I thought okay I'm pregnant myself now so I can make this for my child and I didn't and then <laughs> a few weeks ago I just didn't know what to knit I had no idea what to do and I was just feeling uninspired and everything sucked and it's like eh. so I um I dug this one out and decided to finish it and I had to finish the last round of the lock cabin and I really don't like square blankets they are great for kids you know perfect for kids but as an adult I just really prefer a rectangle I, it makes more sense you know my body is more rectangle than square so I finished it on the ninth round I think of the lock cabin and then I used the yarns that I had left to just add on these stripes and I did that in a way where I used the, the leftovers I had most of first and then gradually down to the least amount of yarn and it's now it's okay size wise you know this is this is how big it is I really like this the yarn that I used is Schachenmeier Baby Merino and I got these as um, like small leftover packets in their factory shop so yeah I'm really happy the yarn is great to knit with and the blanket turned out really cute it's now Tim's blanket he loves using it when we are just snuggling in the evening you know sitting around and yeah I had a million ends to weave in because when I started this I didn't yet know how to weave in ends as I go so that took forever. I think it took me a full DVD, that means four episodes of some TV show, to weave in the ends. Because there were a lot of ends. But it turned out really nice. I like this. It's cute. So, and also it's done. After seven years in the making, it is now finished. Oh, and by the way, I'm in my new sewing room which is not done yet, but usable. So I decided to podcast in here today. So that's it for knitting in the past. Knitting in the present. I am actively working on two things right now. The first one is in this Vera Bradley bag and it is the Confetti Wrap Cardigan, which is a pattern by Julie Knits in Paris. It's this ballet wrap style lacy cardigan. And I have it in here and I chose beautiful yarn, but stupid, stupid choice, really, considering. Because this is a lacy cardigan, so it would be perfect as a summer thing.
but I chose yarn with yak in it, which is not very summery because yak is very warm, but it will be very pretty. So the yarn I'm using is yak yarn. It's Merino yak from Regia. It's this yarn. And this is how much I have still left from the first skein. I divided for the sleeves and the body. Now the back is almost stockinette, except for two lace repeats at the top. And the fronts are wrap over fronts, as you can see, and there's going to be lace now all the way down. The sleeves have lace all the way down as well. Looks like this, like little flower motifs. And I'm finally back at this project. I started this, I think in March, and um, I met on it quite a while, and then I didn't want it at all. And the only thing I made was plain vanilla socks. But now I'm really back and really enjoying making something with an actual pattern. So this is one of the things I'm working on. And the other thing is in this bag. This bag was a birthday gift from my friend, the Stichinista. I think she made it for my 30th birthday, which was a while ago. And in here is a project that I started a few days after my dad passed away because I wanted a project that is very involved that had me you know concentrate on the project and not on everything else and I made the back I started with the back and I knit it until the armhole shaping and then I put it away and I didn't I always wanted to finish this and I never just really felt like doing it because it's, you know, it's involved and I have to think about it. And for the last few months and maybe even almost two years, I didn't want to think about anything. I just wanted to knit without thinking. So I made a lot of simple things. But now I'm back at this project and I'm actually not sure if I have a picture of it in here. It's the Ira Pullover. The pattern is by Linda Maving and it was in, um, the fall winter 2017 issue of of knitting magazine um, knitwear of knitwear i photocopied the pattern from the magazine so i could you know do my scribbling and my writing and marking and i just don't have a picture the best picture that i have for you is this and that's not a very good picture but it's a cabled sweater let's just go with that and I'm going to take it out now, or I'm going to try. So, ow, whack myself in the face with knitting needles. I'm really out of shape <laughs> when it comes to podcasting and when it comes to everything else, let's face it. So, here we are. My sweater is green and it's gorgeous. So, let's see. This is the back. So, the marker does not only indicate where I left off, it's also the point where I am had to measure up, you know, but so this is the back of the sweater. Looks like this. It's really pretty. It has a lace pat, uh, not a lace pattern. It has a cable pattern and um, moss stitch. And the moss stitch is important because I decided to work on this again, took it out, found my chart, found my row marker, my, my, my row counter, because, you know, I left this off in a point where I just could go again. And I started knitting and about here, no, I think this top part, between my fingers here is where I put it back on the needles because I, I can tell you where I screwed it up royally. So between my fingers here for that amount of rows, which is like 30 rows, I knit seed stitch instead of moss stitch but I didn't want to rip back. So what I did instead was I left the first stitch because that's going to disappear in the seam anyway. And starting with the second stitch, I dropped the stitch down individ individually and knit it back up in moss stitch with a crochet hook. And I did that for all the stitches over. And the same on the other side, of course, because I screwed up both sides and that took me almost an hour. And I just like, mm. I actually debated leaving it, but 
but I couldn't, I just, I fixed it. It's now very wonky up here where I did the fixing, but I think that washing it will, you know, make that disappear. So yeah, I have a finished back. And after I finished the back, I started the front and it's done. I finished the front as well. So here it is, the front for my sweater. It's really pretty. It's just so pretty. The yarn I'm using for this is um, a variegated green, which I didn't really think would be an, a good choice because, you know, when the yarn is busy and the pattern is busy, but I think that this works out beautifully. So the yarn is this yarn here. It is Socks and Rock Heavyweight in the Lucky colorway. And here it is. I got this years ago. I don't even remember when, but it was a very long time ago. And the problem was that I had four skeins, which is plenty for a sweater because they are seven ounces, which is like 198 grams and 320 meters or 350 yards per skein. But for this sweater, because it is so heavily cabled, I was short on yarn for about 80 meters or 100 meters according to pattern. So what I'm doing, I had one skein of the same colorway in the medium weight. And it's a bit thinner, of course, because it's a different weight. So what I'm doing is I'm knitting all the ribbing on tight on smaller needles in the medium weight and then after the ribbing I change to the heavy weight for the actual sweater and I should be fine you know I have one complete skein left and this one that's more than half of a skein to knit both sleeves and this again for the ribbing on the sleeves and then for the neckline and I think it's going to work out um, worst thing that could happen is that I have to knit the cable because this has the saddle shoulder with a cable running here where you then sew on your front and back. The worst thing that can happen is that I have to knit one of those cables with the thinner yarn, but I don't think that that would be an issue. So, and they are so close in color that you can't really tell the difference between the ribbing and the sweater, I think. When you look at it like this. So yeah, this is my Ira pullover by Linda Marbing. It is really pretty. I'm really happy about this project and I want to start the sleeves today maybe and work on it. So now I'm going to put it all back and then we can talk about my plans because I am on fire. I want to make everything right now. So Okay, now everything's back in. Let's put that away and let's talk plans. Like I said, I want to make everything. I want to make two ripple crop tops and I have everything ready to go and so much more. Um, but the one thing I decided to talk about today is this one. I want to make the festive doodle, which is a pattern by Caitlin Hunter. And I have seen her work on this. And what I really want is this colorwork sweater and I looked for different options you know if I could find a sweater that is similar by by a different designer or maybe a designer of color and I couldn't find one that was an all-over pattern that didn't repeat itself all the time because this is different all the way through and that's what I like about this sweater so much and I really want to make this out of a tweed sock yarn now, I do have four skeins of Regia Tweed, and they are all different colors, So, and they go together. It's a, a medium to light gray, a dark burgundy red, a burnt orange, and a hunter forest green, you know? They would be amazing, but the pattern in my size calls for like 480 meters per color, and I will not buy another 100 gram skein for 60 meters of that yarn. So I'll either use those four and make it work or I will find a fifth color that I can add in and make up for the amount that I'm short on. Does that make sense? 
So yeah, that's my plan. I want to make this sweater because I really like it. And that's my, my plan is to find a fifth color, but I know that I don't have another tweed that would work. So I either have to go out and buy a skein of tweed, which I don't really want to do because I have so much yarn, or just be okay with one of them not being a tweed. I think I think I can make that work. So, coffee. Okay. Now, the next thing. I, did, I didn't write down show notes, so I have to remember. But I'm pretty sure the next thing is spinning. And I actually have spinning because it's Tour de Fleece. Which I realized on the day it started. I usually plan ahead for Tour de Fleece, you know, weeks in advance. Because I love Tour de Fleece and I usually, like I said, plan way ahead. And um, I didn't do that this year. And last Saturday when it started, I just said to my husband, oh, I just realized that Tour de Fleece starts today and he was like well maybe that is a good reason for you to get back into spinning because I haven't been doing spinning all year. I spun a little bit in January and I think that's it. I just didn't feel like it. So I said um, that I would and he brought out my rose my Maya Craft Rose spinning wheel because I decided to get back to a combo spin that I started sometime last year. And this is the fiber I still have left to spin. I think it's going to fit all on, well, most of it will fit onto one bobbin and then I'll divide the remainder onto the three bobbins I've already spun. All of these fibers, they were five different braids, were from Eterische Öle. She's a German indie dyer. She used to have a shop on Davanda and I think she's now on Etsy and I've had those for a while because I have not bought fiber on the internet in at least five years. So I finished, finished three bobbins and when I do a combo spin like this, I usually don't fill up the spindle or the, the, the bobbins completely, but I rather start spinning fill up the amount of bobbins I think I will need and then when they're all you know equally filled I will divide the remaining fiber equally and finish them. So I now have three bobbins that look like this. They are really finely spun. I mean this is quite thin. That was the first bobbin I made and I had one done and the second one needed the last layer and then I made one completely fresh uh, bobbin. It's this one here, the last one that I finished. And all of these are either Superwash Merino or Superwash BFL. So my plans for this is um, to knit a very colorful and fun cardigan. So yeah, three done, one to go, and then divide the fiber up and fill them, fill them completely. But I will take pictures of that when I'm at that point. So that is one thing I'm working on right now. And I have bought these boxes for each of my spinning wheels. And it has a label with the name on the wheel, of the wheel. And I put my fiber and my started and finished bobbins in here. Because uh, three cats and a child. That's the reason. And I wanted my things to be safe. So I have one box for each spinning wheel and they are just stacked on top of each other. And that way it's safe from cats, kits, and also any other animal that likes fiber. Let's say it like that. So on Saturday evening, I had a VKN and I decided to spin, but I didn't want to carry my rose around the house because it's very heavy and I'm afraid to, you know, just bump it and damage it. So I dug out my Joy, my Ashford Joy, which was a wedding gift from my parents. And I had started one bobbin on it. Um, I had a 200 gram hank of pencil roving, hand dyed by a German indie dyer. And I did not bring the tag, but it, yeah, it's pencil roving, or it used to be. And I had this bobbin halfway done. 
and finished it during VKN and started the second. And yesterday evening, I finished the second bobbin. So this is now completely finished. I'm not sure how to show it to you best. Maybe like this. Um, this is really pretty. It's glittery. It's not as thin as the yarn from the rose, but it's still quite thin. I think it might be a sport weight when it's plied. And I hope to ply it sometime this week. But yeah, these are 100 grams on each bobbin because I had 200 in general. And they're both spun up now. So I'm super happy with that. And I mean, I'm spinning again. And my chair is very squeaky. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I'm spinning and it makes me happy. So uh, yeah. Now, next would be um, new stuff, and I have nothing, because I haven't bought anything. I bought yarn at the Swiss Yarn Festival, where I attended in the last weekend of February, 1st of March. You know, it was on the weekend. And since then, I have bought yarn or fiber or knitting books or anything worthwhile showing off here. The only thing I bought was a tiny bit of fabric. But that's it. I've been really good when it comes to yarn and fiber and fabric. So, um, reading, listening, watching. I've been doing a lot of watching <laughs> and a lot of reading. Um, and I brought the book that I'm currently reading. And it is Uprooted by Naomi Novak. Or Novik. Um, I'm a bit over halfway through the book. And it's one of those books where... I like it, but I don't like it at the same time. It's easy to read. The story itself is not bad, but the rela relationship in it uh, is, sucks so bad. Um, I just don't understand why, especially YA fantasy authors always have to do this, where the guy is an abusive asshole, you know, not physically, emotionally. Um, and the girl still thinks, oh my god, he's so amazing. Because no, he's not. He's a dick. Um, and this is happening again in this book, like it is in so many other books. And that's just one of the things where I was like, oh my god. Once in my life, I want to read a YA book where the guy is a nice guy. Just a nice, nice guy. You know, like it should be. When you start dating someone, he should be a nice guy and not a complete ours. But yeah, here we are. Um, so the book is about a dragon, a dragon, which is a actually kind of magician that's called the dragon. It has nothing to do with dragons. And he comes down from his tower every 10 years to select a girl that then has to come to his tower for 10 years to be his servant, maid, whatever, cook, you know? And the people agree to this because in exchange he will keep them safe from the wood. And the wood is this magical forest that's super bad. And everyone who accidentally runs into it or gets captured by one of the walking trees um, is corrupted and will will then die. So that's the premise. And the girl that's selected is not the girl that everybody thought would be selected because they have to be born. They are 17 when they enter into his household. And the, he always takes the prettiest, the smartest, the best in everything. And this time he chooses not that girl that everybody always thought all her life that she would be taken and everyone treated her special because of it. And her best friend is the one who gets chosen. And yeah, that's basically the, pr the premise of this book. Yeah, like I said, I'm, I kind of like it, but I kind of don't. I'm not quite sure yet. I will tell you in the end if I enjoyed it or not. I'm going to finish it because I invested a lot of time in this already. And I hate DNFing books. It's just, I don't like it. Um, and I read a lot of other stuff, but I mean, if I tell you about all the things I read, we'll, we will be here until tomorrow. So for watching, I've been watching a few things. Uh, um, I started watching Suits, which I quite enjoyed. And 
stopped because it's going to be something that I'm going to watch with my husband. And we also started watching Winona Earp, which must be one of my absolute favorite shows because it's so amazing. It's just very, very funny <laughs> and, and very kind of uh, gory at the same time. I really like it. And we also watched Timeless, which was a nice idea, but kind of the whole... Um, Timeless is a show about a historian who gets asked to work for a secret government section and do time travel to um, kind of hunt down this terrorist who is also time traveling and trying to change things in the past that would then affect the future. So I like that idea. What I do not like is the whole ooh, conspiracy theory and very secret, um, not government, but a very secret society is behind all of it. And that secret society is what actually controls the world and is so secret. And it's like, this has been done so many times. Couldn't it have been, you know, a different reason for the time travel stuff? Because that was actually really funny and really, really nice and well done. But the whole, um, that secret society thing is like, oh, I've seen that so many times and it's not getting better. And then I decided to watch Smallville because I like superheroes. Who doesn't? And I've never watched Smallville. And I had the first season on DVD. And then I checked. It's not on Netflix. It is on Amazon Prime. But it's, um, to buy it digitally was more expensive than to buy the DVDs. So I decided to go for DVDs instead. And I had the first one, which is this one here, which is what, what I am watching theoretically right now. And I got the first five now. So I really enjoy this. It's the teenage years of um, Clark Kent. And I really like it. So I'm watching that. There's something going on outside my window, sorry. Um, and then I found that all eight seasons of Castle are on Amazon Prime and in English, which is a plus 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 because I hate Amazon for, for this. They have a lot of shows in their Prime thing that I would love to watch, but they only offer it in German. You either have to pay for the English version or there is no English version that you can get, which I understand if it's a German show. But most of the shows are in, you know, English speaking origin and I cannot get the English audio and it sucks. I don't understand why they do it. I hate this because I watch everything that is made in, in, in English, you know, I watch it in English, but I cannot because Amazon doesn't offer it for everything, which I just, I don't understand. But Castle is on in English, all eight seasons of it. And I love Castle because Nathan Fillion, that's my reason. It's a good show and it has Nathan Fillion. So it's, I like it. So that's what I've been watching. Um, Rewatching parts of it. And then I started when I was in here sewing on Friday evening, I decided, okay, you know, I want to sew, but also want to do stuff and so right behind my camera or my phone over there is a, um, a screen, a computer screen that's not hooked up to a computer. It's just, you know, plugged in and I can stream stuff from my phone. So I decided to watch Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries and it's amazing. It's an Australian show that has three seasons and it's, um, it plays out or it takes part takes place in the late 1920s and it's wonderful I love it it's just great if you have not watched Mrs. Fisher you should it's like a bit like Miss Marple it's based on a book series that's also called Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries and it's really good I like it a lot so that's what I've been watching and and reading 
I've done the spinning. Oh, next up is sewing. I, I did a lot of sewing and I did tiny videos for that, except for three items. And I'm going to do a tiny video for those. But what I want to talk about today is underwear because I made underwear this weekend. It started Friday afternoon when I decided to make a pair of boxer shorts for Tim because he's growing, you know, all the time because he's a kid and he's also growing more than other kids. I feel like because he's tall, he's very tall. Um, so I found a magazine, a sewing magazine called La Maison, La Maison Victoire. And it is the um, March and April issue from 2019. And what they do, they show you on the back cover all of their patterns that are included. And they have underwear for kids and for adults. So I chose the kid underwear set here. I made the vest and the boxer shorts for Tim and this is a girl panty. So I made these two Adam, and he wears them right now. So I cannot show you, but I also made a second version of the teeny tiny boxer shorts yesterday. And I had this Star Wars fabric, which is funny because none of us, or my husband has seen the Star Wars, but I haven't, and Tim hasn't, but he thought that they were super funny. And I just had enough to make this one pair of boxer shorts. And it has a double layer in the front, like every boxer short does. And it's also easy for him to put on now because there's seams in the back and in the front, but I can tell him where it looks nice on the inside is the front, so he can put them on himself. They're a bit too, not too big, they fit, but they will fit a while, which is a good thing. So I'm gonna make more of these. They're super easy to make. I will not make more of the under shirts because he's wearing his today as a tank top, which is the, you know, what it, what it should be. So also in here is, like I said, uh, underwear for adults. And I have a few different um, underpants patterns that really fit me well. So I decided to not go ahead and try the woman underwear, but I made boxer shorts for my husband. So this is the pattern, looks like this. And I have a boxer short pattern that I've made before. And it is out of a lot of different pieces. And this one here only has three um, pieces that you have to cut. And it's so easy to put together. I think sewing this pair of box shorts took half an hour. What they do is they also have one of those wider elastics in the, in the waist. And I know that my husband doesn't want that. So what I did is I used the other boxer shirt pattern that I've made before for the measurements for a waistband with a channel in it for putting in the elastic. And this is what I came up with. So these are the boxer shorts for my husband, for my, um, they have this cute geometric bear. And I paired it with that brown stripe that I bought to go with the other fabric. And I made a sweater for Tim out of this last year. So these are the leftovers. That's the back. The boxer shorts have this curved seam. So you get to see a bit of the front fabric on the back and a bit of the back fabric in the front. And yeah, here they are. It's the first pair of, I think I'm gonna make like three or four because it's my husband's birthday in two weeks. And like I said, he will get the super cliche pattern of uh, boxer shorts and socks, but they're all me made, you know, hand knit socks and handmade boxer shorts, which are, by the way, a lot more comfortable than store-bought ones, um, according to him. So yeah, I will make more of these. So that was from this magazine. It's a, I think it's from Belgium. I'm not sure. This is a German version and you can usually buy their patterns online as PDFs. So just have to check it out. I'm not sure. 
So that is that. And then I made things for myself. And all of the things I made were from this book. It's called Schöne Wäsche nähen. It's from Katrin Rechtenwald. It's a German book. And there's no English version. But what this book is, it has different underpants and different bralettes. They are all without underwire, just bralettes and some boxer shorts as well. So I made two different bralettes and one of the panties and the other panty was the Arcasia pattern by Megan Nielsen. So I made two bra and panty sets for myself and I'm super proud of myself because I wanted to make bras or bralettes for me forever. And I never dared because I thought that I wouldn't be able to do it or they would just turn out horrible. And on Friday, when I was looking through my leftover bin of jersey fabrics, looking for fabric for Tim, I found leftover strawberry fabric and some black fabric next to it. And I decided, you know, now I'm getting the hiccups. I decided, you know what, I'll just give it a try. Let's just do it. And I did, and I'm really happy with it. So this is the bralette. It looks like this. It's, there's nothing in it, you know, it doesn't have a foam or anything. So it's this strawberry fabric. It has this ruching up here, or, you know, it's, it's gathered down. And I added this lace that I basted by hand in place before I seamed it down so it would stay. Then it just looks like this. I have a white closure because I have white straps because that's what I had. It also has white elastic, pico elastic around. And yeah, this is the first bralette that I made. And to go with it, like I said, I used the Acacia um, pants pattern by Megan Nielsen. And they look like this. Oh, and I have to cut off fabric. Oh, I'm going to do that right now. I have to cut these threads. They're uh, serger threads. Then I, I sewed the ends in, but okay, now, now they're gone. So these are the pants and the lace in front is a bit crooked. I didn't manage to get that on super straight, but yeah. And the back is the strawberry fabric. And I used up every last bit of the strawberry fabric and I had to piece the the fronts together here that should have been one big piece and I couldn't do that because I didn't have enough fabric left and yeah so when I had cut these and I looked at it, it was like oh, it kind of looks a bit you know like it doesn't belong together so I found this lace stretch lace in my stash and just used that to tie everything a bit together so this is what it what it looks like and they they fit the of course the cups on this are a bit big not too big to be able to wear it but they are roomier than they probably should be which is because i have very small breasts you know i need a very large under breast or under chest size um but the actual cup size is quite small so finding a bra that fits me is a nightmare because I need a 38A, which doesn't really exist. I went to a Victoria's Secret shop because I thought they have everything. Yeah, no, they don't. I was looking around forever. I couldn't find any bra in my size. And when I was leaving, a clerk came up to me and was like, hi, uh, wasn't your shopping experience successful? Can I help you with anything? I was like, yeah, it wasn't successful because you do not carry my bra size. And she looked at me and was like, are you sure? And I, I looked at her and was like, I need a 38A. And she just like, yeah, no, we don't have that. Like, mm -hmm. like every other store on the planet, it's really hard to find a bra when you need a large band, but a small cup. So I now managed to make one that fits. It doesn't dig in anywhere. It doesn't hurt. It's just, yeah. I'm going to make more of these and I'm going to try and make the cups a bit smaller and change the other things around to make it fit a bit better. But I'm happy with it, you know, it turned out quite nice. Um, I stitched the this 
black thing down in the back by hand to make it just sit where it should. And so that's the bralette and the acacia pants where I made the largest size of, which is depressing because I'm not the largest person, you know? So after I had this done, I decided to go back to my book and find a different pattern. So I'm going to show you this one that I just showed you. It's called Daisy and this is what it looks like in the original pattern. And there are four different bralettes in here and I want to make every one of them. And then I made Amelie, which is the one that I wanted to make for a while. And it is this rep, rep style bralette, also with a normal bra closure in the back. And I had put away this leftover fabric. I made a short sleeved and short pant pyjama out of this fabric. And I got this for two euros at a fabric market in a leftover bin and I set aside the leftovers to make this bra and I bought all the findings specifically to make this bra so when it came time to cut it I was I was barely able and I only was able to because I did not put this on the grain but just flopped it in the way it was fitting which is not cross grain not against the grain it's just super awkwardly in between and then I could not find a fabric that would be large enough to cut for the lining, especially not a fabric that goes with it, you know? And I was thinking about this. I wanted to have a yellow, but I didn't. And I know that I do not have a single colored jersey in any of these colors, you know? So I <laughs> came up with the idea of cutting together a t-shirt. I had this t-shirt in this blue, and the blue fits quite well with the blue in the front fabric, you know. So I just cut apart a t-shirt for for this. <laughs> and I, I am quite happy with how it turned out. So I do not regret my decision. So this is the Amelie bralette. It's this wrap over style. And the pattern does not call for securing the wrap, but I did. I just sewed over here a few times to make it stay in place and again I could have probably made these cups a bit smaller because small breasts but I just did it according to pattern for my first try and I like how it turned out it fits really well and looks like this from the back has a small bit of the main fabric and then the under bust is another channel where you just put in elastic and I wanted to make a panty that goes with that, but I knew that I didn't have a whole lot of fabric left of the main fabric. Um, and the piece I had was too small to cut these wrap over pieces because they were like this long. Um, but it was big enough to make underpants to go with it. And I decided on this pattern, it's called Matilda. And I have made these before, so I know they fit. And they look like this. Now, to be clear, my iron, I ironed this down here so I can top stitch it. I'm gonna get to it. And my iron spewed out dark brown bits and water and just rusty stuff. So my pants look like I shat them before I wore them, which is not fun. Um, yeah, I have these, I, I just hope it will come out with washing because I have these three of those gigantic brown blotches now. So these are the pants. They look like this from the front and they look like this from the back. So I was able to cut the back piece out of the leftover part of that fabric. And then I came to the front and I couldn't cut this in the main fabric. So what I did is I sewed the biggest bits I could find of that main fabric onto blue fabric and this whole thing here is 
okay i'm gonna take the one without the blotch on it this whole thing here is one pattern piece so i stitched it down and cut it this way so i was able to get the main fabric on the front as well and not have the front be just blue but then <laughs> i ran out of fabric for the back so i attached these lace bits which i would have you know ideally it would have been white but it isn't so i used this lace and i was barely able to to cut it because this was a lace that's this wide and like i said the pieces just fit on it so all in all i made two sets of bra and panty out of leftover fabrics from my stash and that makes me very happy because the lace as well was a leftover and I used it up completely except for like a five centimeter strip. So I just enjoy making things out of leftovers. It makes me feel so good to completely use up material without having leftovers over again that you then you know, you can't throw them away because they're too big and you don't know what to do with them. So when I'm able to make things out of leftover bits, that always makes me very happy. And then I'll have two new bralette sets that go together. So yeah, it makes me very happy. And I'm going to make more of the boxer shorts for Tim and I'm going to make more boxer shorts for my husband, all out of the leftover bin because they don't have to super match, you know, it's it's a pair of underpants who's gonna see it and um i want to try out the other two bralettes in here one of them is this one that is supposed to not have a closure and just be a slip on which i will not do because i hate those really hate them and the other one i will also change to have a closure looks like this I'm going to make this as well and I'm going to put the closure in the middle of the front between the cups because it has a really nice back that I do not want to disturb. So I'm going to give the other two bralettes from this book a try and if they also fit I will be making more of these because I finally found a bra pattern. Bralette, I don't really need a bra, let's face it. Um, I found a bralette pattern that fits, that doesn't hurt, it, and yeah, so there will be more. Okay, that's the sewing. I have nothing else crafting-wise for everything else. I, um, I had a VKN last weekend, so that was on the 4th. So the next week VKN will be on the 18th, Saturday evening. No, no, it's not the 18th because I'm invited somewhere. I'm not sure yet. I will let you know as soon as I know. I'm thinking about doing like a tour de fleece spin in, you know, um, sometime during the week. Probably in the evening because that's when I, I can do it, you know. On the other hand, I'm quite flexible. So maybe it would be better if it were my morning and uh, America's evening I just don't know I'm gonna figure it out and I will post it in my Ravelry group and on Instagram and if you're not able to access Ravelry right now because of their site changes you can let me know on Instagram and I can send you a link so you could join the Zoom room that I am having for VKNs and spin-ins and stuff so that's the first thing and then I always do a mental health talk in the end. And I'm going to make it quite short. Um, my mental health is up and down and all over the place, which is probably a case for a lot of people because there's a lot of anxiety about what's going on on one hand. But on the other hand, it's a lot of calm and quiet because of the lockdowns and the restrictions, I was forced to slow down, you know, I didn't have any appointments for weeks and I didn't have to put a um, an alarm clock in for months, you know, because there was no kindergarten. Kindergarten started again two weeks ago. This is the third week or the fourth week of kindergarten. 
And before that, Tim was home for almost three months. So my husband's um, work is restricted to only work from home. They are not allowed to travel anywhere. So he's been home since January, since the end of January. And I have not seen my husband in, you know, in one piece, one time piece for that long in 15 years. So <laughs> I'm... I'm really happy about this. I'm not happy about why this is happening, you know, that's horrible. But the effects it has on me and on my family, I am learning to appreciate. Being together, slowing down, no appointments, no going anywhere, just being home, being together. And I know that I can say that because I'm uh, very privileged in that. Because my husband is able to work from home you know, none of us lost their job and um, we have enough space here. We have a house and a small garden that we can just enjoy being in. And I'm very, very grateful for all of that and all of the circumstances that come with this. So, like I said, my mental health has its ups and downs and it's like a roller coaster lately, really. Today is, um, I feel surprisingly good considering that it's my dad's birthday. And I thought I would be a blubbering mess today, but I'm not. I feel surprisingly good, which I hope is a good sign for healing. And um, yeah, I'm not gonna go into more because that there's been 57 minutes of this already, and I think that's enough. I will hopefully be able to record again next week. I hope to go back into a weekly recording schedule because I am making a lot of things right now and have a lot of things to show and talk to you about. So, yeah, I hope uh, there's still people out there who watch this. I really do. And yay. Yeah, yeah, I'm just going to stop. I hope you all have a wonderful time and I hope you enjoy everything you do. And I'm going to get really close because I have to hit the button. So until next time. Bye.